Hello, very good evening to all of you. How are you all my future doctors? So, I hope you all must be relaxing after your examination. So, friends, how is the life going on? Kya chal rahe? Aaj kal kya kar rahe? Kaisi masti chal rahe? So, bachon, these 15 days, I can say, these are the golden days of your life. So, jitna enjoy karna hai, jitna masti karna hai, jo karna hai karlo. Because once you are passing out your exam, either doing your internship or doing your post graduation, then you will be busy in your life. Okay. So, as we all know that we are here to discuss about the PSM section of the December FMG 2021 examination. Now, if we see the overall response about this paper, so I can say the paper was of a, a moderate level. It was not very easy also because some of the questions were uh, very tricky. And if you had a good knowledge of the concept of the topics, then you were able to answer those questions. It was not very difficult also because most of you could solve a very good number of questions. And if we talk about the PSM section, then I could collect around 37 questions from the students. And if we see the topic wise distribution, this time next to the various diseases in the national programs which comprises around the seven questions, there were about the fifth five questions from uh, prevention and obstetric and pediatric. That is a very, very important uh, section. Now, overall, if I say the 37 questions which I could uh, collect from the students, 30 questions were directly from the PSM section and the seven questions I can say were having the overlapping with the pathology, especially for the questions in the occupational diseases, with the pediatrics, especially the questions on the breastfeeding. And some questions were, I can say from the physiology section also, like they had asked uh, glycemic index and uh, sodium content. So, in this way, seven questions I can say the overlapping questions, but uh, 30 questions were straightforward from the content of community medicine. Now, if I say the level of uh, these questions, again, these questions were not the very straightforward questions. And that is why the students coming out uh, from the examination hall after first paper, and they were not that very happy. Some were saying that first paper was little bit difficult because not a very straightforward one liner questions. They were the tricky, but yes, concept based questions. In comparison to the first paper, the second paper was little bit easy, having the more straightforward questions. So, as I was saying that in the community medicine, we were having the seven questions from the diseases and the natural programs, five from the prevention in the obstetric pediatrics, four from the nutrition, again a very important topic. And unexpectedly, the three questions of the health education, it is a very uh, small topic, but three from the health education, three from the occupational health, Three from the contraceptive, epidemiology 2, demography 2, statistics 2 and one one each from the concept of health and disease, environment and biomedical waste, social health, international and the miscellaneous. And uh, very unexpectedly, we do not have any question from the vaccines, we do not have any question from levels of prevention also. These are the two uh, very, very important uh, sections, but anyhow, we had these questions. So, 
before starting the session, I'll say that these are the recall questions. So, the format of the questions may not be in the same language what has been asked in your examination. The options may not be the same. These were the options or the questions what we had collected from uh, your memory only. So, if you find any difference in the question or in the options, please let me know. So, we can uh, rectify because we have to choose the best answer from the given choices. It may not be exactly the correct answer, but we have to choose the best answer from the given choices. So, if the choices are different or if any of the keyword is missing in the question, then your answer may change. So, friends, very good evening to Sneha, Rahul, Raj, Gloria and let us hope for the best. So, now the first question and before uh, going to that question also, I would uh, highlight uh, one more point that out of the one or two questions which we had not discussed in our uh, classroom teaching of the MIST, maybe the offline, online or in the test and discussion, rest of the questions we had covered either directly or the concept based. So, all of you were able to answer those questions. Now, very commonly asked a question and we had discussed in our 25 important questions also about the maternal mortality. And the question was the number of the maternal deaths per 1 lakh live birth is. Or some were saying that a question was asked like as a multiplying factor of the 1 lakh is where. So, we had discussed this so many times that this is not a rate, it is a maternal mortality ratio. And we know that what is the difference between the rate and the ratio. Now, if a numerator is a part of the denominator, then it is a rate. And usually it is expressed as per 1000. But if the numerator is not a part of the denominator, it is a ratio. We are comparing the two different things. And what is happening in the maternal mortality? Because here we are comparing the number of the maternal deaths out of the live births. So, two different things. If they say that maternal deaths are out of the a woman population of the reproductive age group, it is your maternal mortality rate. But in the maternal deaths, we are comparing the maternal deaths out of the live births and that is per 1 lakh. So, it is a ratio, not the rate. And as we all know, in the infant mortality rate, it is a number of the infant death per 1000 live births. Under 5 mortality rate is death in the uh, 0 to 5 years per 1000 uh, live births. So, here the correct answer is maternal mortality ratio very commonly repeated a question or the repeated section from where the question is asked. Now, the next is in a population of 10,000, the sex ratio is a more than 1,000. What is the correct statement? Now, here this was a little bit a tricky, but as we know the concept, so we were able to answer this uh, question and yes, you are very right that it was the male less than a 5 thousand. How? Because here they are saying the sex ratio is more than a thousand. Means obviously the female population is more than the male population. Now, if we had a thousand sex ratio, it means the thousand will be the female, thousand will be the male. But as the female population is more, so out of the ten thousand population, because they are asking that out of the population of the ten thousand, if my uh, sex ratio is 1000, then the female population will be 5000, the male will be 5000. But here, now it is more than the 1000. So, obviously, the female population will be more than 5000. And what they had asked is less. So, obviously, the male population will be less than 5000. So, it is not a less than 500 because it is after the total population. Male is less than 5000. Yes, this is the correct answer. The female is less than 500. No, the female is 
uh, less than a 5000? No, because if a sex ratio would be less than 1000, then yes, this could be the statement that female is less than 5000. But here the statement is that sex ratio is more than 1000. Now here I just want to highlight one more point. Recently we had a data release of the National Family Health Service of uh, fifth survey and um, it has given a very good news that overall a sex ratio is 1000 or 20 means a female population is increasing. Now couple has given the birth to their first child. Now family is entering in which phase and this we had uh, very well discussed in our uh, classes either the offline or the online of the missed classroom and this is related to the family cycle and we have discussed that from the marriage till the birth of a first child is the formation of a family. From the birth of the first child till the birth of the last child is the extension. Now from the birth of the last child till the first child leaves the family is the contraction or is the completed extraction and from the uh, first a child uh, leaves the house till the uh, last child is leaving the house is the contraction and from the last child leave the house till the death of the spouse is the completed a contraction and from the death of the spouse till the death of the uh, survivor of the spouse is the dissolution of the family. So this is a, what is the family cycle. So here the question is that couple has given the birth to their first child means now the child is born. So from the formation phase they are entering into the extension phase because now the family is extending. So here the correct answer to this is the extension of the family. Okay. Yes, you all are very right. Uh, it is the B that is an extension. Now, uh, Sudeep, it is not an A because it is not forming because formation is the marriage. Already the marriage has happened and before or at the point of uh, giving a first child, it is a formation because only the husband and wife are there. But once their child has born, their family has started extending. So, they say that couple has already given the birth of the child. So, obviously the family is now in the extension phase. Okay. Now in the 14th century, there was a disease called plague and for how many days ship and all the passengers were kept under the quarantine. Now we had uh, studied the definition of the quarantine as the separation of the individuals who are exposed suspicious for the maximum incubation period of the disease. But in earlier decades, although the incubation period of the plague is 2 to 7 days, and uh, in general, and if they ask for the bubonic plague, we say it is again two to seven days. But if they ask for the pneumonic plague, it is only the one to three days. So in general for the plague, we say the quarantine or the incubation period is only two to seven days. But earlier they were keeping them in a quarantine for around 40 days. So this was the correct answer for this question, 40 days because in the past they were keeping the individuals having a suspicion of the plague for 40 days. But nowadays we are not having the uh, very commonly the plague scene. So we are only following the quarantine for a yellow fever and uh, we say the yellow fever quarantine is the 6 days and we are having the quarantine for the COVID-19 infection and that is considered to be as the 14 days. Okay, so the correct answer for this is the uh, 40 days. Now population covered under the plus minus one standard deviation of mean S. Uh, Raj, you are saying that an expansion option was there, not an extension. So if it is an uh, expansion also, so this is the uh, same thing that uh, we are having. But if there was an extension or the expansion both, then the word is extension is a better over the expansion because the phase name has been given as a formation, then the extension, the completed extension, the contraction, completed contraction and dissolution. Okay. So even if a expansion is given, then the best answer is extension. Okay. Then 
This was again a very, very a commonly asked uh, portion and we are discussing a great detail about the Gaussian curve. And we know that a population covered within a plus minus of the one standard deviation is none other than 68.3 percent, clear? And 34% uh, is only mean plus of one standard or mean minus one standard, means only on the one side. So, if we say that this is the uh, Gaussian distribution or the normal distribution pattern. Now, if we say that population coverage only towards uh, either plus of one standard uh, deviation or towards the minus of one standard deviation is individually 34 percent. But if we say that in combination between the plus minus of the one standard deviation, it will be 68 or 68.3 percent. 95 percent is within the plus minus of the two standard deviation, 99 is within the plus minus of the three standard deviation. So, here the correct answer is it is 68.3 percent. Very straightforward question and I hope that uh, each one of you had made this question correct. Again, a very, very straightforward question, very commonly asked uh, section from biomedical waste disposal that after doing the dressing of a patient of a roadside accident, the cotton saw will be disposed. Now, here only the key word is the disposal of the cotton swab and we know that um, these are the infectious non-recyclable material, cotton swab will be going in a yellow bag and the method of the disposal of the content of the yellow bag is incineration. The plastic items we are disposing in the red bag and white is collecting the sharp items and black is collecting the domestic waste and we had another is the blue which is having the glass items and discarded body implants. So, here the correct answer is a yellow. Now, absolute contraindication of the device given in the image and uh, I can say that uh, only the single image was asked from the community section, community medicine section this time in the examination and that was the uh, image of property. Now, here please help me in uh, confirming the options because some were saying that one option was a uh, vaginal bleeding. Second was an history of an ectopic and there was a query about this pelvic inflammatory disease. Some were saying that option was an history of pelvic inflammatory disease and some were saying it was a pelvic inflammatory disease because dono mein answer mein farak hai. Anemia is a relative contraindication so this will be out because we have to choose only the best one. Again, the history of ectopic pregnancy, although this is an absolute contraindication, but it is having a less weightage between the vaginal bleeding and the PID. So, please help me that whether this was a past PID or this was a current simple PID. Now, if it was written that history of PID, then again, although this is not an absolute contraindication because there is no current infection, it is a relative. So, then I will go with the vaginal bleeding. Please listen carefully. If a question was asked, the history of the PID, yes, the all of you are saying that history of the PID. So, then definitely the correct answer will be the vaginal bleeding because in the history of an ectopic pregnancy, although it is an absolute contraindication as per the 25th edition of the PAC, but if we have to choose the best answer after the history of the ectopic or in the vaginal bleed, I will go with the vaginal bleeding of an unknown etiology because there could be the underlying malignancy, then we have to rule out that. So, if it is a past history of uh, a pelvic inflammatory disease, it is a relative contraindication. So, this is again out. History of an ectopic pregnancy, yes, and over the vaginal bleed, I will prefer that answer should be the vaginal bleeding, clear? And we all know that this is a device for the temporary contraceptive and this is supposed to be the best method of the contraception for delaying the uh, next pregnancy or having the birth spacing and we are putting the device just after the delivery under the program component as PPIUCD and we have to insert the copper 3, copper T380A within the first 48 hours of the delivery 
and the duration of copper T 380A is lasting for 10 years. So these are the points what we have to remember and uh, this is uh, what a uh, copper is present in both the arms horizontal and the vertical arm and there is a thread hanging from the device that is an intrauterine uh, contraceptive device because this thread helps in the confirmation in the follow up that the device is in place one thing. Second this helps in the removal of the device also. Okay. So, all you are uh, saying that the history of the PID and history of an ectopic pregnancy and the irregular uh, vaginal bleed. Okay. So, this was not an exactly the vaginal bleed. So, this was an irregular uh, vaginal bleed then the answer is irregular uh, vaginal bleeding. Clear? Now, minimal number of the antenatal visits as per WHO. Now, here as we know that the minimum number of the visits as per the government of India are 4, as per the WHO are 8 actually and uh, average visits are 13 to 15 or 13 to 14 in number. Because the gynae books uh, says, obstetric book says that it is uh, 13 to 15 and Park says 13 to 14. But as luckily we do not have an option 8 here, so no confusion. So, answer for this is a 4 minimal number of antenatal visits are there and we know that antenatal visits are being given by multi-purpose worker female and these visits are done in the different different periods for their different purposes and which you might have studied in detail in your obstetric classes also. A 25 year old lady coming with the complaints of the vaginal discharge and the lower abdominal pain. The color kit used is again this is a very very commonly asked a section. Uh, some are saying that this was uh, 5 number of the visits also. So, 3, 4 and a 5 ok. Option were 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay, not the 10 or 14. So, the options were 2, 3, 4 and 5. Yes, in that case, the answer should be 4 because there should not be any confusion um, regarding as the 8 was not there. Okay, great. Now, as I said that uh, these uh, color kits are again a very commonly asked section. We know that 7 color kits we are using for the treatment of uh, STDs under the Suraksha clinics as a syndromic approach of management and uh, what we do in the syndromic approach of management means we are treating the patients based on their symptoms not on the diagnosis because for the diagnosis they have to go to the higher centers it is taking the more time the more costly affair and by the time they are reaching they may um, getting the delay because they are arranging the money, they can spread the infection to others. So, we are treating based on their symptoms and we are having the seven color kits are there. Now, if only the vaginal discharge has been asked, we know that for the vaginal discharge, we are using the green color kit. But luckily, the green color kit is also not there. But remember one point, in future if they ask even the vaginal discharge with a lower abdominal pain, so here the more priority is given to the lower abdominal pain and the lower abdominal pain is because of underlying infection. So, if there is an underlying infection, the pelvic inflammation, pelvic inflammatory disease, we are using the yellow color kit. So, because of this pelvic infection, they can be having the vaginal discharge also. So, if a abdominal pain is with the vaginal discharge, you are the correct answer is the yellow color kit. Although the green color kit was also not there, so no confusion. The gray color kit we are using for the urethral anorectal discharge or the cervical discharge. The green color kit we are using for the vaginal discharge. The white color kit we are using for the genital ulcers which are non-herpetic in origin and they are responding to the penicillin. The blue color kit we are using for the genital ulcers who are sensitive to the penicillin and uh, red color kit we are using for the genital ulcers which are herpetic in origin. Yellow color kit we are using for lower abdominal pain or the pelvic inflammation and the black color kit we are using for the inguinal abupos. So, these are the seven color kits available in the Suraksha clinic. So, the correct answer is yellow color kit. Now, here again uh, there was green was given in an option red was also in the option 
okay so there was a uh, green was given some was saying the green was not given some was saying the green was given okay so one option was the red green yellow a red green yellow and what was the fourth option red green yellow and what was the fourth option there and white okay so red green yellow and a white so even if a green is given as i said that the lower abdominal pain is there so it should be the yellow and again there is a mixed controversy some are saying the green was not given and some are saying the green is given because maximum students were saying that green was not given so anyhow whatever is given that green was there or not the answer is a yellow color kit clear so again a controversy but uh, no problem as these are the recall questions the concept is that we should be knowing what the color kits we are using for the different uh, categories okay so uh, Hemant is 100 percent sure that green was not in an option so once you are 100 percent sure so definitely I am going to cut this uh, green option and uh, blue was given okay so this is an another fourth option is coming out so I am going with an option as red yellow white and a uh, blue okay so majority are saying that a green was not given that's why students were saying that they don't had any confusion because green was not given as a vaginal discharge so they had gone with a lower abdominal pain and they had uh, take this a yellow kit anyhow now uh, kit number was also given Rahul okay so a yellow kit might be the number six was given could be the possibility because it is a six number kit is a yellow okay so I can just add up that a kit number was also given with this okay done great now again there was a little bit confusion in this question and the confusing point was only the educational status now question is a worker posted in a village in the age group of 25 to 45 years one thing she is eighth pass a widow or some were saying that it was a married or diversity could be the what was the correct answer uh, correct option so married a widow or the diversity with good communication skill identify the worker now only the catch for the confusion was that the eighth pass because we know that now the minimum education is the 10th pass but as we had discussed this point in the asha workers also in the anganwadi workers also where the qualification is 12th pass that if this qualified lady is not available in that area we can take the lesser qualified person also okay so if other parameters are coinciding with a asha worker like a age is 25 to 45 years with a good communication skill the posted in the village and uh, other the married or widow so uh, posted in the village or the option was in the same village okay so from the same village was written great and eighth pass as i said yes and uh, yes uh, you are very right uh, uh, vishnu that we had studied the 10th pass as i was saying that uh, the 10th pass is there but uh, as we had discussed this point also if the 10th pass is not available we can take the eight pass or the lower qualification also so only that was the confusing point and the one more confusing point was that they had not mentioned the asha they had given it's a full form accredited a social health activist so here as uh, i had always uh, tell you the mantra of exclusion also so multi-purpose worker female it is not a uh, posted or uh, in the village she is uh, working in the sub center and anganwadi workers it is not restricted with the age group because it is not a, a specific criteria as well as the good communication skill is not a very very important criteria for the Anganwadi workers because they are sitting in the Anganwadi centers these Asha workers they had to uh, motivate the community regarding the acceptance of the health services so they should be having the good communication skills like uh, 
um, suppose if you are going for a, a window shopping, you do not want to purchase anything and just you had entered in a shop and suppose if the salesperson is very smart and telling you about the advantages of the new product, you are bound to purchase. So, same like if a Asha worker is very good in a communication skill, she is going to motivate the community regarding the acceptance of the health services and especially the main function of these Asha workers was for promotion of the hospital deliveries. So, at least the community says, chalo, is bar hospital mein bahu ki delivery kara lete hai, agli bar dekhi jayegi. We'll take our uh, daughter-in-law to the hospital this time for the delivery and we'll say later on and once they are satisfied with the services in the hospital they're going to motivate the other people also so that's why they should be having a very good communication skill so uh, here the best answer for this is none other than the accredited social health activist and this is the asha a worker okay and um, trained dai yes it's an uh, okay aya dai or uh, trained dai Okay, so you can write like a trained adai was in the option. Okay, so one option is an AM. Okay, so multi purpose worker female was a dear as an AM. Auxiliary nurse midwives are now called as multi purpose workers. Clear? So the options are AM workers, the accredited social health activists, the unwadi workers, and the trained dai. So the correct answer is the accredited a social health activist or ASHA worker. Only the confusion was the eighth pass, okay. But rest all were pointing towards the ASHA workers and what we had already discussed in our classes is the recruitment a criteria for ASHA worker. Now, pregnancy kit for the follow-up at home. And we know that uh, pregnancy kit is none other than the nishche kit. Nishche is a Hindi word, nishche karna, decide karna. Because with the urine pregnancy kit, they will confirm whether they are pregnant or not and then they will decide whether they have to continue the pregnancy and they have to abort. And uh, nikshe is she kate Hindi me tuberculosis ko. So nikshe is an IT software related to the tuberculosis okay so this was an uh, niche so uh, can anybody help me in uh, writing the other options what were the other options for this question that uh, pregnancy kit for the follow up at home one was an niche kit another was a niche any other option if you can remember nai pehel okay Okay, any other option? Today and Saheli. Okay, today Saheli. So these are the dear uh, five options I could have. Kilkari was also there. Okay. So, there was a, so many options are there, free days was also there. So, free days, Niksha, Nishche, Nai Pehel, Kilkari, okay. Anyhow, I am having the 5-6 options in this, uh, but the correct answer is none other than uh, Nishche. Nai Soch. Okay. Bhaiya, yaha pe to tumne line bhar di. Achha, it was a combination. Okay. Nikshe and the TB surveillance. Okay. Nikshe and the TB surveillance. Okay, bhai, yaha pe to 8-10 option ho gaye, kya karu? It's a new miracle in the national board history that we are having the 8-10 options for uh, one question. Wa ji wa, wa ji wa, great, great, great. Anyhow, our answer is the niche kit and I'm very sure that all of you must have answer correct. Okay, okay, 
So, this could be the combination also as you are saying that uh, Nai Soch, Kilkari, Free Days, Today, Saheli, okay. Anyhow, the answer is Nishchek it, okay. Now, burden of the disease. Burden of the disease is represented by a DALI, that is a disability adjusted life years. Now, this is the time lived with the disability or it is due to the premature death, the time is lost is the DALI, that is the best indicator of the burden of the disease, clear? And the other indicators of the burden of the disease is the prevalence of the disease and the proportional mortality rate, okay? And uh, I'm not very sure that what were the other options because uh, some were saying that other uh, indicators of the disability was also there. So, I'm not very sure whether this was the Sullivan index, Hali or the Quali was written in that. And uh, Sullivan index is nothing but it is a life lived in the healthy state. The Hali is the life ad expected to live in a healthy state uh, with adjustment, health adjusted life expectancy. And quality is the a quality adjusted life years, the life which is lived in a healthy state with adjustment, okay. So, here the burden of the disease is only the DALI. So, they had given a, a full form, okay, disability adjusted life years. So, here the correct answer for this is the DALI. That is the best indicator of the burden of the disease. And if you say what is the best indicator of the disability, it is your HALI, that is a health adjusted life expectancy. Now, another straightforward question that if you want to teach how to prepare the ORS in the urban slum areas, then which method will be used? So, obviously, if you want to show them how to prepare, we have to uh, demonstrate them, we have to show them, we have to uh, tell them that these are the steps and they have to prepare. So, this is not a role play because role play is nothing but a nukkar natak hote na, just say they are just uh, playing a short play and through that they are giving the message. The demonstration, they are doing the thing because the person can see and whatever they can see, our eyes can see, it will be uh, remembering in the brain for a very longer time. So, jo hum dekhte hai, wo hum karte hai. So, we have to uh, show them that how to prepare and then only they are able to prepare the ORS solution. So, this could be the answer for this. The group discussion, again, this is the discussion among the individuals and this is just to change the uh, mindset of the individual, okay. So, this is also out and I do not know what was the, the next, it was the flash card, okay. So, the correct answer is the demonstration, clear. Dancing, so not a role play, so that was the dancing, okay. So, beta, Mohsin, by the dancing, how we can show them to prepare the ORS, okay, no problem. So, the correct answer is demonstration. Picture was given, Archana, a picture of what? Picture of uh, ORS preparation. So, please let me know. What was the picture? Lecture was also there, okay. So, one is saying the lecture was also there, another was saying that uh, role play was there, the dancing was there, okay, no problem. Whatever it was, no picture was given. Okay, okay, picture was not there. I think uh, I had uh, got the feedback from the patient that only the one picture was given in relation to the community medicine that was only for the IUCD, okay. So, now here the question was that if you want to explain the nutritive value of the various food items to the family members, 
with the help of the pictorial chart. Now, this was the very, very important uh, catch that with the pictorial chart, because some were saying that no pictorial word was mentioned. And if the pictorial word was not mentioned, then it can be the other qualitative methods of the data presentation could be the pie chart or the bar chart. But as the word, the pictorial chart was there. So, yes, the pictogram is the correct answer because in the pictogram we are showing them the different pictures. So, if you want to explain the nutritive value of the various food items with the help of a pictures, then this is none other than the pictogram because the histogram it is used for the quantitative data and it is not there. But yes, the bar chart, pie chart can be used for the qualitative data in the bar chart that we are just identifying the nutritive value with the height of the bar and in the pie chart that how much percentage of the area is covered that is a pie chart. But yes, if the uh, pictorial charts are mentioned, then definitely the correct answer is pictogram. The dose of uh, vitamin A to less than 8 kg baby of more than 12 month age. So, dose of vitamin A. Now, please help me that whether the weight of the baby was mentioned or not. Because if the weight of the baby was mentioned, then your answer is different. Because here, if a dose of the vitamin A of more than 12 month age, then the answer will be 2 lakh international units. Okay. But if they had mentioned the weight of less than 8 kgs, then the answer will change. So, please let me know whether the weight was given or not. Weight was given less than 8 kgs or more than 8 kgs. Weight was given less than 8 kgs. No, more than 12 month was there. But what was about the weight? 8 kg or less than 8 kg? Because I had brought these two screenshots and these screenshots are from your a park test book of the 25th edition from the page number 513. Because I know that you will not believe on me. These are the screenshots from the Park Test Book 25th edition, page number 513, that they had clearly mentioned that if a baby is between the age group of more than 12 months, it is 2 lakh international units. But if the baby is of any age group more than a one year, but if the weight is less than 8 kg, then the dose should be a 1 lakh irrespective of the age. Irrespective of the age. So, if it is written that a weight is less than 8 kg, then even if it is a 12 month old baby, the answer will be 1 lakh. So, question was, that a 8 kg, 8 kg of 12 month. So, please let me know it was an 8 kg or the less than 8 kg. So, there is a very mixed opinion. If it was an 8 kg, and 12 month baby, more than 12 month baby, then the answer will be 2 lakhs. Okay. But if the weight is less than 8 kgs, then the answer will be 1 lakh. So, I am leaving this on you because you have to tell me 
that uh, what was the exact a uh, question okay so if this was a question that are less than 8 kgs and the 12 month baby then answer will be the 1 lakh international units please listen carefully but maximum of you are saying that a weight was less than 8 kg so i'll go with the answer of the a 1 lakh international units okay but if they didn't mention the a weight of less than 8 kg then answer will be the 2 lakh okay so maximum of you are saying that weight is less than 8 kg so definitely in a 12 month old baby even a, a 12 month old or more than 12 month old but if the weight is less than 8 kg the answer will be the 1 lakh international units clear the most common cause of childhood blindness the most common cause of the childhood blindness is a vitamin a deficiency if this is the most common cause of visual impairment in the children it is the refractory error but yes if the blindness they are saying it is the vitamin a deficiency and that's why to reduce this a childhood blindness which is preventable we are giving vitamin a as a vaccine in our national program now again this was a question that uh, although straightforward question but little bit uh, tricky a patient is returning to the delhi from the assam so this is a one catch that the person is coming from the northeast states and on the first day some was saying like this it was written on the first day had a fever second day had the dizziness the third day had the seizures and confirmed as a plasmodium falciparum on the blood smear so no doubt the person is having the plasmodium falciparum okay and uh, most of you were searching for the artemether lumefantrine combination but here the rest of the options were the chloroquine chloroquine we are not giving for falciparum the quinine we are giving for the falciparum but this is preferred in the pregnancy mefloquine again this is not used as a treatment it is used for the prophylaxis and yes because the person is having the central nervous system a manifestation so we cannot give the oral so if a word iv artesunate was mentioned then this is the best choice because in a person with a neurological manifestation we are not giving the oral drugs we are giving the iv drugs okay so iv artesunate is the correct answer a 40 year patient working in the stone cutting factory presenting with dry cough a weight loss with the possibility of the tuberculosis is the result of which pneumoconiosis okay now we know that stone cutting industry is having the stone particles silica particles for which the workers are exposed so if they are inhaling the silica particles they are having a possibility of the silicosis and this silicosis disease having individuals are at a risk of having the tuberculosis so as the person is presenting with the symptoms of the tuberculosis so underlying disease is silicosis okay uh yes dear uh, you can consider this as a, a pharma question of the malaria also and you can consider as a psm question also because we had discussed this point in our national program guideline same like you can say for this pneumoconiosis this could be your pathology question also this could be your psm question also as i am saying that are seven questions were overlapping questions okay now if you want to check for the incidence of deafness caused by noise effect in the office workers and the factory workers after one year the study conducted will be now as we know that uh, when we have to identify the study then we should be searching for the some keywords the one keyword is whether they are giving us some parameter which is calculated by that particular study and as we had 
very clearly discussed that if an incidence is mentioned in the study, that is a cohort study. If the prevalence is mentioned in a study, it is a cross-sectional study. So, one catch word is that they are saying that they are trying to check for the incidence of the deafness. So, definitely this is your cohort study. Now, the question is that whether this is a, a prospective cohort study or it is a retrospective cohort study, then we have to see that when the study was started and what is the direction of the study. So, they are saying that they are are having a two groups. One is in a group with the noise effects in the office workers. Another is a group in the factory workers where they are exposed to the noise and they are wanting to see the results after one year. Means they are going in a forward direction at this point and after one year they want to see the effect of the noise on the deafness. So, they try to calculate the incidence. They are going in a forward direction. So, this is a study none other than the cohort study. Okay. A patient from the Rajasthan quota working in a stone breaking factory. Okay. So, incidence. So, patient from the uh, Rajasthan quota factory. This was in the, uh, sorry, this was in the previous question of the pneumoconiosis, not here. Okay. Uh, so, this was. Uh, Prospective cohort, okay. So, they didn't mention the cohort, it is a prospective cohort study. What else? A oh, great. So, anyhow, this was a, a straightforward question and there should not be any a doubt. A maize eater with the diarrhea, dermatitis, and the memory loss. They did not mention the dementia, they mentioned the uh, memory loss and the disease is. We know that these are the features of the pellagra. This is because of the deficiency of the vitamin B3 niacin. So, we all know that maize eaters are having a lesser amount of the tryptophan and excess of the leucine. So, this leucine is acting as a negative catalyst and which is preventing the conversion of the tryptophan into the niacin and that is why they are having a niacin deficiency causing the pellagra that is being represented as a diarrhea, dementia, dermatitis and the death. Now, Corsicov psychosis is because of the deficiency of the uh, thymine B1, we can have a beriberi or the Corsicov psychosis. So, what were the other uh, options in this question? The pellagra then uh, yes dear we are having a tryptophan deficiency but excess of the leucine and that is uh, what is the uh, pathology of this pellagra in the means so what are the other options in this one was the pellagra another was the corsic of psychosis any uh, option you can add up in this so, they do not have a pellagra, they had mentioned the vitamin B3, okay. Glossitis, other options were the glossitis, okay. Great Mosin, Chilosis, okay. So, glossitis, Chilosis. Yes, dear Sandeep, you are very right. Your answer should be the pellagra and the pellagra is the correct answer, okay. Forget about the options, okay. Now, maximum number of the candidates in a group discussion to avoid the overcrowding. Now, in the group discussion, we know that it is just to change the health attitude and the behavior and we are having the number of the candidates in the group discussion is 6 to 12 and these are sitting like a round table discussion and the graphical representation that who is asking the maximum questions to others and this is your sociogram and this is to change the health attitude and behavior of the community and just to motivate them for the acceptance of the health services. Now, 4 to 8 we are using in the panel discussion or the clinical symposium. So, the best answer for this is 6 to 12 members we are using in the group discussion. 
So, last option was 12 to 15, okay, or 10 to 15. Yes, I know that the picture was not given. This was only I was trying to explain that this is an another question that it is the graphical representation of the group discussion is called as sociogram. Clear? 12 to 21, okay, 12 to 15, 12 to 21, okay, 12 to 21 was another option. 13 to 15 was also there, okay. So, could be a possibility 3 to 4 was not there. Okay, no problem. So, you can say it was um, 13 to 15, whatever you can say that the main is the 6 to 12 is our answer, clear. Now, this was again a very, very unexpected question that land area are required to fill the trench of the 2 meter depth with compacted refuse for the population of 10,000. Okay. So, basically this was the question related to the disposal of our domestic waste in a sanitary way. Either we can have a dumping, we can just uh, spill the waste anywhere, but the best is the sanitary landfilling or the control tipping. Matlab, ek jage hona chahiye, khali jage, pe gadda khodenge, trench khodenge, and then we are putting a waste, we are compressing it with the machine and we are putting the soil over that again putting the waste compressing. So, there must be the sufficient land area. So, for a population of the 10,000 the waste amount that is generated and that will require a trench or gadda of the 2 meter depth to cover the waste generated by 10,000 population and this will be in a, a one acre area and currently we are not using these words as an acre or the biga. So, one acre is equal to 43,560 square feet. Now, as we know that uh, in the metro cities we are having the 2 BHK, 3 BHK flat. The 2 BHK flat is roughly around in the 1200 to 1300 square feet and the 3 BHK flat is between 1800 to the 2500 or 2700 square feet and 1 acre is equal to 43,560 square feet. So, such a big area or we can have the 1 acre is roughly equal to the 3 bigas and this is still the term we are using in the villages for measuring the land area ki bhai jiske paas jitna acre zameen hota hai utna wo ameer hai ki uske paas mein 10 acre zameen hai uske paas mein 20 acre zameen hai because when they are uh, fixing the uh, relationship or for the marriage purpose they are just trying to know ki bhai uske paas property kitna hai aur villages mein property hai uska zameen so unka zameen kitna hai unke paas mein ki kitne acre unke paas mein a space hai and that is giving indirect reflection of their wealth ki bhai unke paas mein itna paisa hai so here the correct answer is the uh, one acre so one acre two acre and three acre also now three biga beta it is uh, the again the words we are using for the size of the land. So, roughly the one acre is including the three bigas uh, because the biga value is different in the different states also, but in general the one acre is equal to the three bigas or one acre we can say it is equal to the 43,560 square feet also, okay. So, the correct answer for this is a one acre, okay. Now, reinfection in the presence of antibodies in the blood will flare up the symptoms of. Now, if already the antibodies are present and if you had an infection with the another strain of the virus and it is leading to the flaring of the symptoms more of the clinical manifestation and this is commonly seen in the dengue infection because we are having the four viral strains and if you had an infection with the one strain earlier it is not giving a cross protection with the other strain and if you had an infection with the another strain especially if you had post infection with the dengue virus one followed by the dengue virus two then they are the very high possibility of the hemorrhagic manifestations okay it is not seen in the measles not seen in the rubella not seen in the malaria so here the correct answer is the dengue infection. 
so polio was also there so which was not uh, okay polio was there so polio was there rabies bhi tha okay so what was not there malaria was not there great polio rabies measles was there measles rubella malaria was not there okay malaria was not there rabies polio and okay great so the correct answer is the dengue infection now all are true for the colostrum except now we know that colostrum is the first milk which is there just after the delivery and it is a thick lemon yellow colored yes this is the true statement and that's why i always tell you in the classes that in the past the mother was not feeding their babies this colostrum because it was having a yellow color and they say it is a witch milk bhutani ka doodh nahi pilana and after the 2 to 3 days when clear white color milk is coming then only they are giving but later on now we are educating them that this colostrum is very good for the baby and you have to give the colostrum to the baby so colostrum is uh, yes that uh, thick lemon yellow color and it is having the high protein and fat so high protein is there but fat is not in the high because if a high fat is there then it will not be able to be digested by the baby very easily so this is a false statement because fat is low it is having a very good amount of iga yes this is a true statement and high mineral in the amino acids are also there so this is also a true statement so fat and a sugar so sugar and fat okay sugar and fat the protein nahi tha okay so if a, a sugar and fat was also there then again the fat is not there in the colostrum so this could be the answer so either it could be the protein and the fat or it could be the sugar and the fat then this is the answer because iga is present the high mineral and the um, amino acids are also there it's a lemon yellow color so the answer is sugar and the fat a child is presenting the fever swelling in neck and the testes two more children in the village are having the same symptoms the diagnosis is now if a history of the fever with the swelling in the neck and the testes so if the neck swelling the swelling is in the level of the salivary glands along with the testicular swelling so this infection is none other than the mumps infection because in the measles we don't had a testicular swelling rubella again we don't had a testicular swelling the pertussis again we don't had a testicular swelling or the swelling in the uh, neck also because in the diphtheria we had a swelling in the neck and in the rabies also we don't had a neck swelling rubella we don't had a neck swelling so here the correct answer is it is the mumps infection if you want to reduce the selection error in a clinical trial conducted among the two groups the best method will be so if you want to reduce the selection error now selection error can be reduced by the matching or the randomization but as they are saying in the clinical trial so diphtheria was there in the option okay so in the diphtheria we can have a neck swelling but we cannot have a testicular swelling tuberculosis involving the lymph nodes okay tuberculosis involving the uh, lymph nodes okay so if we want to reduce the selection error then matching will be done in the case control study and the cohort study not in the clinical trial and again it is not a a uh, best way then blinding it is not for the selection error the randomization is the correct answer so here the correct answer is randomization now evaluation of the birth and the death rate in a state of the country is done by 
The fourth option was standardization. Okay. Standardization. Okay, uh, no problem, uh, uh, dear, if you had marked the tuberculosis with the lymph node, no problem. So, evaluation of the birth and the death rate in the state and the country by. We know that continuous registration of the birth and death is through the civil registration. In the sample registration survey, we are usually doing the six monthly survey by an independent officer, it is a dual survey. So, by that also we are collecting the birth and the death. National Family Health Survey, it is done every 5 years, census is done every 10 years. So, in all these we are having an evaluation of the birth and the death, but if we have to choose the best, then the answer will be the civil registration system because here continuously we are doing the registration on the day to day basis, clear. So, I will go with the civil registration system. Now, there is a controversy in this question, uh, the evaluation of the birth and the death in the state or the country or it was in the national level, okay. On the national level, yes dear, even if it is a national level, then definitely because civil registration system is a continuous registration and simple registration system we are doing every 6 months, it is a dual survey to check whether every birth and the death are being registered or not. So, It was the national level, okay. Yes, though, so, uh, still I will go with the a civil registration system because it is a continuous registration process. Now, Bajra mixed with the black seed method to a segregate. And you are saying that it was mentioned as a state as well as the national, okay. So, not a country as a state and the national level, okay. Then uh, Bajra mixed with the black seed. Now, Bajra, please uh, clarify this question that whether it was a bajra mixed with the black seed or it was that in the bajra there were the some other seeds were mixed. It was not a sieving was not given, it was a normal saline. There was a full story in the Bajra seed question, okay. So, whatever I could get from you that something was there that a Bajra was mixed with the black seed and usually this is seen in the cases of the argot poisoning when the Bajra crop is there and during the flowering phase it is getting infection with the Cleviceps fusiformis, Bajra seeds, black seeds were taken from the farmer combination of the seeds, the bajra seed, black seed taken from the farmer. Because if the question was like this, Parda with the contamination, uh, farmer wife consumes the bajra seed and had an allergy, only the bajra. So, bajra seeds become black. Yes, if a question is like this that in a bajra, some of the bajra seeds are becoming black, then how you are going to separate? So, it means it is no other seeds are mixed, some of the bajra seeds are black. In that case, this means that this crop, the bajra seeds is having the fungal infection 
during the flowering phase they are infected with the claviceps fusiformis and this is the condition as the uh, argot poisoning and they are having the toxin as a clavine alkalis and argot alkalis and when we are eating those bajra seeds contaminating with these black fungus we can have a, a symptoms of a vomiting in an early stage we can have an allergic manifestation and in the advanced stage we can have the gangrene formation also so the best method to uh, segregate is with the 20 percent sodium saline the farmer come with the complaints that my wife had the black seeds or she gets a fever and the other symptoms Bajra seeds were abnormal and the discolored. Okay. Bajra seeds were abnormal and the discolored. So, in that case, this is a argot poisoning and it is being removed with dipping in the 20 percent sodium chloride solution. And these black seeds, they are lighter in weight and they are coming on the top and they are being separated. Okay. So, the correct answer in that situation will be the 20 percent sodium saline. Now, you are a medical officer of ESI. Treating the insured patient is under. Now, if you are a medical officer of an ESI, now ESI hospitals, ESI dispensaries are giving the medical care to the workers and this is coming under the direct medical benefit. Now, if we had a worker population of more than thousands and their families in that area, we are having the ESI dispensaries. Now, if there are the less than 750 workers and their families, we are having the temporary ESI clinics are there and further less then we can have a mobile a van also, mobile dispensaries also going in that area and giving them the care. Now, what is an indirect medical benefits? In those areas where we do not have the ESI dispensaries, we are having a, a panel system. We are taking the doctors of that area under contract and they are treating the workers and their families. That is an indirect medical benefit. But as they are seeing that you are a medical officer of an ESI hospital, then definitely the ESI dispensaries or the ESI hospitals are there and you are treating the patients or the workers, then this is coming under the direct medical benefit. Okay. Then uh, sickness benefit is actually a part of a direct medical benefit when we are giving the a leave for 91 days or the 3 months with 70 percent of their salary and the extended sickness benefit if some diseases are not treated in a 3 months, we are giving them the leave for 2 years with 80 percent of their uh, salary. Okay? And uh, there are other benefits like uh, a maternity leave also, the leave of 6 months duration with 100 percent of their uh, salary or we are having the enhanced sickness leave or where we are giving them the leave of 7 days in the cases of a vasectomy or we are giving them the leave for 14 days in the cases of a tubectomy with 100 percent of the salary. So, these are all under the direct medical benefit. Question was under the ASI you appointed as a medical officer what this called okay under the esi you are a medical officer appointed under esi what this is called and what was an options dear what it is called and what were the options Okay. So, please let me know. So, you are saying that a question was like this that you are appointed under the ESI as a medical officer and treating the few are insured. 
if you are insured and you are treating them, what is called? Few are insured and some are non-insured. And few are insured and you are treating them definitely, it could be a direct medical benefit, okay. If they are insured because you are in the ESI hospital, so some are the insured and you are treating them. So, it is coming under the direct medical benefit. Lung malignancies is associated with and we all know that lung malignancy is associated with none other than asbestosis. A two year old child uh, reported to the PSC with the complaints of the fever and the breathlessness. On examination, the respiratory rate is 36 per minute and the presence of the chest in drawing, the management protocol is. Now we know that uh, this is a question related to pneumonia and we know that the pneumonia is classified as per the IMNCI program into the four categories, no pneumonia, pneumonia, severe and the very severe pneumonia. And this is based on the respiratory rate, the presence of other symptoms of the hypoxia. So, if a respiratory rate is normal, then it is the home management or it is a green color phase. So, how you are saying that it is a respiratory rate is normal? So, it depends upon the age. And they are saying that a two year old a child, we know that between a 0 to 2 months, the maximum is up to the 60 beats per minute is normal. Between the 2 months to the 12 months, it is a 50 beats per minute is normal. And more than a 1 year is the 40 beats per minute is a normal. Although the respiratory rate is normal, they are saying the 36 per minute, but they are saying the presence of the chest in drawing. That is a very important point. It means it has gone even beyond the pneumonia stage that is a severe pneumonia where the chest in drawing is there and in the very severe pneumonia we are having the uh, signs of hypoxia. So, this is coming into a severe pneumonia and the severe pneumonia management is that we are giving an antibiotic and doing their immediate uh, referral. So, in the uh, no pneumonia phase it is a green category only the nothing is required then in cases of the pneumonia, we are giving an antibiotic, it is coming in a yellow category, we are giving an antibiotic doing their follow up and if it is a severe and the very severe pneumonia, we are giving their antibiotic and doing their immediate referral, okay. So, antibiotic and follow up is in the yellow category that is in the pneumonia phase and uh, in antibiotic and the immediate referral will be the correct answer for this situation, okay. Now, all are true for the vasectomy except vasectomy, we all know that it is a permanent method of sterilization for the male. And immediate contraceptive results, no, we do not get an immediate contraceptive results. We have to give them a three months of contraceptive. Now, permanent method, yes, this is a true statement. And contraceptive results are after the three months, yes, this is again a true statement. So, the answer for this could be the immediate contraceptive results. So, what can be the fourth option? If anybody can let me know that what was the option for this question. So, this was um, the question we had that all are true for the vasectomy. And we all know that if you are doing the tubectomy, after the tubectomy, we can have an immediate results because here the no contraceptive use of the barrier methods are required. But if you are doing the uh, non-surgical tubectomy by putting the Escher implant means through the hysteroscope we are putting an implant on both the bilateral corneal lens. It is requiring the three months time for getting the fibrosis and the uh, blockage of the corneal ends of the tube. Then yes. We are requiring a barrier methods for three months if you are doing in a uh, non-surgical tubectomy by putting the SR implant. But in the vasectomy in each and every case, we are having the uh, use of three months of barrier methods. So, immediate uh, sterile with immediate contraceptive results, it is the same thing. So, this is the correct answer. Now, information uh, specially of a biased or the misleading nature used to promote a political cause or the point of the view is 
the propaganda means we want to highlight its advantages only we don't want to highlight its negative points so that was the propaganda and uh, i don't know that what were the other options in that question what was the other options in that question where we want to highlight only the positive points of that particular method and you don't want to highlight the negative aspects non scalpel was an option okay so this was a non scalpel method so uh other was a health promotion okay advocating okay advocacy could be the advocating or it can be the advocacy okay whatever could be so the correct answer for this was the propaganda clear the next was an absolute contraindication of the breast feed and we know that galactosemia if a baby is having the lactose intolerance then yes it is an absolute contraindication now mother with a cytomegalovirus infection we can do the feeding so this is a not an a contraindication absolute now mother with a herpes infection but not at the site of the feed again the feeding can be done so here the correct answer is galactosemia health education okay health education so propaganda is the correct answer for uh, this now the next is a tubercular patient resistant to the isoniazid rifampicin canamycin and the quinolones he will be categorized as hepatitis c was also an option okay hepatitis c so again in the hepatitis c we can uh, give this breast feed a tubercular patient resistant to the isoniazid rifampicin canamycin and the quinolones he will be categorized as we know in the multi drug resistant the resistance will be only to the isoniazid plus rifampicin now if it is a, a mono drug resistance then only the resistance to be the one drug so again this is out extensive drug resistant cases yes they are resistant to the isoniazid rifampicin that is a first line treatment and they are resistant to the second line treatment as in canamycin and the quinolones also and these are the extensive drug resistant cases so here the correct answer is extensive drug resistant cases or the xdr cases the lowest glycemic index is now glycemic index means that any person who is taking a food that what is the rate of absorption of the glucose in the circulation and the rate of increase of this blood glucose level now if you are giving a food of a high glycemic index like in uh, energy drinks we are having a high glycemic index suddenly the blood sugar level increases and in the diabetic patients we are giving the food of a low glycemic index clear so this is helpful especially in the management of a diabetic patients where we are promoting for use of low glycemic index food and uh, park 25th edition has clearly mentioned that all the fruits are of a, a low glycemic index except the watermelon except the sweet corn and the potato so here the correct answer is the papaya now more sodium content this was again a question where we can go with the common sense like soup green vegetables bread and the cane of the soup so always remember any of the preservative if it is there in a preserved food so cane of a soup is there already means some preservative is there and usually the salt is acting as a preservative either the high amount of the salt or high amount of the sugar is acting as a preservative so obviously the more sodium content from the given choices will be in the cane of a soup so these were the few questions uh, what i could recollect from the students with their options 
and these were the a possible correct answers from the choices given in the question. So, dear friends, we all are waiting for this stage to come and waiting for your phone calls and the messages that yes, madam, I had done it. And we know that this is not possible until unless you had worked so hard because you are not getting this success so easily. As a new key, you have to get the success so easily. No, you are working so hard and you had already worked so hard to achieve this success and your juniors are awaiting to listen your success stories. So, get ready with your success story to tell to your juniors and tell to the other people. And uh, in the last, I can say thank you very much for giving me the right answers and right options and the right format of the question. So, love you, my friends, love you, doctors, love you, bachas, and God bless you. So, all the best and just cross your fingers and everything will be fine. ठीक है ये जो दिन बचे हैं इनको खूब अच्छे से एंजॉय कर लो बिकॉज दीज आर द गोल्डन डेज एंड दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू कम बैक ओके सो बाय बाय टेक केयर गॉड ब्लेस यू